Good afternoon chaps, hope you're keeping well. Um, this is my next video in my getting started with Sharps practice. Um, my initial plan was to do a video each step along the painting process so you guys could follow along at home. But after looking at my notes on the previous battalion I painted, I realized that that's just not going to be practical. There's over 50 steps and that's more suited to a how to paint video, which I'll do at the end of the series once the army's done. But this week the focus has been on doing the, the basic um, French light infantry blue and trying to build that up to a finish point, which I feel that I, I've got to and I'm really happy with. Um, so that's really where we are. What I just want to make some comments about is the batch painting method that I'm using. When you look at this, if it's a first time painting or first time historicals, 54 miniatures is quite a handful. I mean, that's almost a 40k army just sitting in front of you. And that's the start of where your army is and hopefully you're going to expand and enjoy the process. But I really find that batch painting for historicals is the way forward. First of all, it guarantees that you have a consistent coloring throughout your unit or regiment or whatever you're working with. If you paint each model individually, you're always going to have that variance because you're remixing your recipes, etc., to each model. Um, the second thing is I feel that it really gives you motivation to complete the project because either it's not completed or it's completed. It's not like you have five miniatures that you've painted to a really nice standard and the other 50 odd miniatures are just sitting there in various stages all on bottle caps. So when you finish, you have a great army and that's the whole point of this um, exercise is that I want to document the development of that um, and during the process that's where you get to. Now, as I said, I've been focusing on the, the French Imperial Blue when it comes to the miniatures. Um, I've done some practice videos, but the blue is not really, I don't know if it's my gloves or if it's the lighting here, is coming out a lot darker than I wanted to show you guys, but it's basically complete. If I take my glove away, there's, yeah, the camera's not happy with the, there so you can kind of see what the look or feel I'm trying to achieve now this is made up of multiple stages of, of painting so as I discussed in the last video how we got here was to first of all do a base coat of Canto blue and chaos um, Abaddon black mixed 50 50 um, and that I did in two thin coats now that's basically building up your recesses you know, the folds of the clothing, under the bayonet, etc. To, to, you know, just give you the shadows and the depth. Um, this is more like an old school technique. Lots of people are using washes now. My issue with washes is it always gives slightly dirtier color if you're not using the same color wash as the color that you painted. Um, later on, I'm going to use washes for the face and the, the musket, etc. and the backpack. But then I'm using a brown wash on a brown backpack and then I think it works. But if you're trying to do, say, blue, the black or the, the brown wash always makes it slightly dirtier than I was hoping. So I'm just going to put this chappy down here. So what I did is that, as I said, is that we have a mix of these two paints, 50-50. Then the second stage is that I do two parts Cantor Blue, one part Abaddon Black. Um, this is the first main highlight, once again done in two thin coats, building up mostly everywhere except leaving the recesses unpainted. And then slowly from that, add more and more Cantor Blue to the mix until it's very close to the pure Cantor Blue, with the final highlight being Cantor Blue itself. Um, this gives a really rich, um, characterful, I think, um, blue. That I'm personally, as a recipe, very happy with. There we go. These gloves are killing the blue though. But as you can see there on his knees, the lightest, and then just below, it's a lot darker to really give that nice sense of depth. Um, so that's the, the basically the blue done or taken care of. And now I've started moving on to the great coat painting. Now, as you can see, it's a very dark gray blue that I've chosen. Um, here it's just a personal choice. As I said earlier, I really like uniformity. 
so this whole unit or army is all going to have the same color gray coat um, if you're painting at home and you, you you know you want your browns or your light blues you know go right ahead um, lots of different colors and and manufacturers were used especially during the peninsula war so you really have a bit of artistic freedom to work with that so this color not only do i use for the gray coat on the miniature but it's also on the little kepi sitting under the um, cartridge box as well as oh, this one i haven't got to yet but as well as the royal on the back because obviously this over here in some cases would have been that great coat rolled up on their backpack and so I've done it the exact same color now in terms of my painting process for this and I'll talk more about it in the next video when they're complete is that the base coat consists of a mixture of one part oh geez, one part um, model color blue from Vallejo so that's number 52 in their model color range. Um, I'll put all this in the, the description below. Not only the recipes, but also the, the paints used. Two parts dark Prussian blue. Now this is very similar to the Cantor blue, but as I've said in previous videos, the Cantor blue has a nice shine to it. And when I started this project, where I live in South Africa, Vallejo was very difficult to get hold of. So this was my original kind of blue that I used, but what I really like is it adds a bit of shininess where this one is a much more matte finish and I, I quite like that combination. I'm not sure why, but I think it works well. So it's two parts, the dark Prussian blue, number 50. And then between two and three parts of the German camo black brown um, from the Panzer series 150. So it's all Vallejo model. And those three combined mixed gives you this very nice gray dark blue which is a good contrast to the pants because that's really what I'm trying to do is that I don't want the whole model the same color I want a bit of a break between the pants at the bottom and the rest of the what would you call it the rest of the great great coat so now once you you've done your base layer and I I've, I've, I've always try and do two thin coats when I'm doing a base layer um, the next thing is to work on is to actually build that up. Um, well, not build it up because that's the darkest, but you're going to get a, a highlight going. Now, if you look at the guys at the back here, you can see it says very dark around the center chest and the collars and everywhere else. But it's almost like a worn look that I'm going to be going for. A bit of dust or whatever you see here. So there's a really nice gradient of color taking place from the bottom to it and it also shows like the light catching it now this is the one place during this whole process that I'm not going to batch paint in terms of this color followed by that color here it's almost like a wet blend that I'm just going to mix and add and build up as I go along and that will go I've counted there I've got 24 gray coats so each gray coat will be from base coat which is here to that final will be done as one kind of painting session, so to speak. Um, all I'm gonna do is once you've got your, your base three colors, that is your, your mixture, is I'm gonna add a light gray. Um, I don't have that with me now, but I'll talk about that in the next video. And that we just kind of add into it to, to build up that coloration. And then basically 75% of the miniature is complete and then I'll be adding then I'm gonna do black next and then that's the boots and the ammo pouches and um, the un yeah the shackles that don't have a, a cover sitting on it as well as all the shackles that have just their little peak sitting here so and as you can see then you you're basically building out the miniatures quite quickly from there because the main kind of part of the miniature is done. Now you're adding all those little extra bells and whistles that really bring it alive. Um, and those are the next kind of videos. And before we know it, we'll have our, our Sharps Practice um, unit completed. Um, just some final thoughts is that I was reading through the rule book again recently and I saw that I'm going to need some civilian figures. So I'm just having a look around to see what I want to do there but 
I think that that's probably the next figures that I'm going to be ordering in. Finish the French, finish the British, a few civilians, and we're ready to start building the table. So I'm very excited how the project's progressing, enjoying making the videos. I hope you guys are too. Um, I think it's just a, a nice a nice motivator also. So um, yeah, the last thing that I've been thinking about is a piece of information or advice that I got from another YouTuber, I'm not sure what channel it was on, but it was talking about improving your painting. Now, I've been painting for the last, I was thinking about it the other day, 15 years. So more than half, well, just under half my life. Um, but I never kept records of anything I painted in terms of color mixes, in terms of the process, anything. So when I go and look at my old work, or I painted some imperial fists that I did my old method where I did one minute at a time and I painted nine and I haven't done the tenth one, I have no idea, because it was more than three or four years ago, what colors I used to achieve that. And to now try and rework it out and try and match, it's like trying to paint somebody else's miniatures. So I really encourage that I'm now using a Google Doc, put in there whatever whatever army or whatever thing you're painting, write, you know, stage one, stage two, to stage three, describe the different parts of the miniature, and just put your colors in. It's made such a huge difference with this paint through already. It's made a lot quicker, and any time that I need to add to this army, or if I wanna bulk up some battalions, in the French light infantry way it's not a problem I can just go and find where it's saved and pull it out and it's the same when I do the British I'm gonna make a, a spreadsheet laying it out um, once both units are done I'll probably make those spreadsheets available but I just think that with this hobby we need to be able to you know share the information and I find that's for me when you're painting if you can just get some really good recipes it really puts you on the on a good footing to put out some really good miniatures because the miniatures are so well sculptured they almost paint themselves but if you can't get those mixing right and the colors right it's always a bit of a challenge so i hope you enjoyed this video i've rambled on much longer than the previous two maybe just like hearing my own voice or getting more used to the process um but yeah, so hopefully next week I'll have the next video out for you guys and you can see what process has been made. If I can get through all the grape coats and start maybe some of the black or maybe working on the muskets. But otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your week and keep well. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.